and welcome to On Tap Sports, the channel where we cover all the sports all the time, but there's a heavy emphasis on college football, and not just on college football, but primarily on Michigan and Ohio State and the Big Ten and all things considered around that realm. And if you're an Ohio State fan and you're new here, don't worry, I'm a reasonable Michigan fan. I give Ohio State probably too much props. I get a lot of hell from my other Michigan fans that I give them too much props, but uh, they're a damn good football team, and so I kind of try to be realistic here. We're going to cover Ohio State versus Maryland right now in two hours or a couple hours or so. We'll cover Michigan and Nebraska. We'll cover both of those games. They were thrillers, at least the Michigan-Nebraska game was. If you're an Ohio State fan, this one was a thriller for you. Ohio State wins 66-17, to and let's just be real. They look like the team that we expected to see from the get-go. That Oregon loss, as the season goes on, is going to mean less and less and less to the playoff committee and to just general college football fans as a whole. It was early in the season. Oregon brought probably their A or A-plus game to Columbus that day. Really got that stretch run going. Ohio State couldn't stop the run at all, and they were able to get the W in an effort for Ohio State that I would say is maybe their C effort. And uh, they made some mistakes, obviously, that really cost them the game. But that was weeks ago. Like I said, that's that's a fit. That's back in the day. Back in the day, because now they're going up against Tulsa and Akron and Rutgers and Maryland. And yes, these are some teams that aren't that great of teams. Sure. But Michigan fans, when we beat teams like this decisively, we admit and we say, hey, we look good. We may just be playing a bad team, but we're covering the spread and not just covering the spread, we're covering it by a long shot. So if we're going to give kudos to our squad when we do that, we also have to be reasonable when Ohio State does that and covering the, the spread, are they? I picked Maryland to cover the 21 point spread yesterday. Lost that one, obviously, and I lost it from the get-go. Pretty much early on, it was clear and apparent that Ohio State was going to run away with this one. Maryland fought early into the first quarter, and Talia Tungavailoa did everything he could to keep his team in the game. He went 28 for 39, two touchdowns. He did throw a couple costly interceptions, but for the most part, a Tonga Vailoa did what a Tonga Vailoa is supposed to do in college football, and uh, he did have some success through the air, like I said, 279 yards. But the big story for Ohio State's defense today, they stopped the run. That is something that they've struggled with in the past. Some games they've had struggle against the pass as well. But this particular game, they stopped the run. Maryland ran the ball 36 times. They had just 56 yards. That is 1.6 yards per carry. Ohio State, you got to believe they might be figuring something out on that defensive end, and they really needed to, obviously. You got to make adjustments. Good football teams make adjustments. That's why Ohio State's a good football team. They fix the things that need fixing. And I'm telling you, we're going to talk about it later with the Michigan-Nebraska game. Michigan needs to do a better job of doing that. They need to con they need to work on some of the things that they're not, that they're weak in. They need to get better and progressively better, and they're not. But Ohio State in this one did that in a big, big way. So the defense only gives up 17 points. I'm not going to talk too much about that, to be honest with you, though. I'm not that impressed with only giving up 17 points to Maryland's offense because Maryland's offense can be pretty good. But with Demis down with an injury, they had another injury yesterday. Uh, it's really just Tonga Vailoa on that offense at this point. So I'm not too impressed with the 17 points that they gave up. That's good. I'll take it. I would take it any day if I was an Ohio State fan. So yeah, of course, we'll take it. But it's not as impressive as the 66 points that Ohio State puts up. And the fact that they just continue to do this on a consistent basis ever since the Oregon game. And even the Oregon game, if you take away some of the turnover on downs and stuff like that and the interception and stuff like that, Ohio State drove. They got plenty of yardage and stuff like that. They moved the football. They just made some costly mistakes and shot themselves in the foot in that game way too many times. 28 points is all they scored in that game, if I recall correctly. I think it was 35 to 28. But they could have scored in the 40s. Plenty. Easily. And they didn't. But this game, they get 66, and they've been scoring in the 50s and late high 40s and everything else as of late. And it just shows you how prolific that Ohio State offense is. The big playability, it continues to be a thing for the Buckeyes. And it's going to get them, in my opinion, through the season. I think they're going to go undefeated the rest of the way. I'm obviously going to be rooting for my Wolverines on that day whenever we play against them, but I just don't trust our back end, our secondary, and even our linebackers in the flats. We saw we had some issues with that yesterday. I think we're going to have a lot of issues with linebackers in the flats. You think about Travion Henderson going in the flats against us. 
we're in trouble there. And you think about Chris Olave and Smith and Jigba and Garrett Wilson deep down the field, we're in trouble. Yesterday, Olave long uh, of 36. He had a long of 36. Smith and Jigba had a long of 42. Garrett Wilson, 29. And Travion Henderson, 30. So those are the four guys I mainly talked about. Those guys are just tortures and they continue to do it week in and week out. It's not like it's somebody just, you know, one guy or maybe even two guys doing it each week. It is those four guys consistently doing it. And some other guys are helping in the effort after those four, but those main four guys continue to get it done through the air. And they also ran the ball well yesterday. Five yards per carry, 33 carries, 166 yards. CJ Stroud. There was some controversy with some Ohio State fans thinking, hey, maybe McCord's the guy, you know, maybe somebody else besides Stroud is. Some Ohio State fans weren't that big on CJ Stroud? Let me know. I think um, Stomping Pink, I think you were one of those guys. I might be wrong, so uh, I apologize if I am. I think you were one of those guys. What do you think now after you've seen CJ Stroud over his past couple performances? He looks like the guy that we figured he could be. Yesterday he went 24 for 33, 406 yards, so surpassed that 400 yard mark, five touchdowns, and most importantly, did not turn the ball over. Ohio State just absolutely obliterated offensively. And and uh, that's what you like to see out of your starting quarterback. I know Maryland's defense isn't that great. I get it. I understand that. But, uh, you know, he did what the defense gave him. He took what the defense gave him. I think he's going to have a little bit harder time against Michigan State and Penn State. If I'm Michigan State or Penn State, I feel a little bit better with my chances against Ohio State than I do Michigan. Uh, Michigan, you know, I think we can slow the game down a little bit, if possible, by running out clock and stuff like that and really kind of bruising Ohio State. You saw us kind of really wear down Nebraska's defensive line late into the fourth quarter. We're definitely going to discuss that in the next video. So we'll be able to do some things against Ohio State, but stylistically, I think our play is very much in trouble against Ohio State. We're going to have to absolutely improve on the offensive line, and in the secondary, we just have to get better, man. That is a concern. So Ohio State moves to 5-1. and one. Again, I said I think they're going to win out from here on out. It's going to be crazy, man. There's so many openings. Obviously, Alabama lost yesterday. They have the one loss, and um, you got Oklahoma. They're just flirting with this disaster over and over and over again so you got to believe that they're going to lose at some point probably even before the Oklahoma State game which should be a thriller and you got Clemson obviously is already out of the mix with two losses Georgia looks to be the best team in the entire college football uh, realms but I'm telling you man I think this Ohio State team I'm sorry I, I, I can't it, <laughs> the Michigan fans hate me when I say this, when I give them too much love. But again, last year I picked them to win the national championship. They got to the national championship game. This year I picked them again to win the national championship. I think they have a great shot at getting there. It's not going out on a limb. They're a very good football team, and they're always going to be in the mix. I'm going to need them to lose again. I'd love for them to lose to us. That way we don't even have to worry about it. They won't even make the playoffs. But I think they're doing exactly what we thought they were going to do, which is click figure it out and slowly but surely that coaching staff is starting to fine tune some things and they can definitely score with the rest of them if that defense starts to really figure out how to stop the run watch out watch out no matter who you are georgia alabama cincinnati oklahoma michigan penn state iowa watch out if that defense starts to figure out how to stop the run which they you know portrayed that they could do are capable of doing 66 to 17 a convincing win for the buckeyes they got a bye week next week i think they're going to win that one they got at indiana they'll get the w there and then the big one on october 30th against penn state same day that we play michigan state the big 10 now with five teams in the top 10 in the rankings some tides might be shifting there we'll talk about that throughout the rest of the season as well big 10 might uh might be surpassing the SEC at least this year and maybe even moving forward. This might be the rise of the Big Ten. The race is going to get interesting in the East at least. At least in the East. It's a solid, solid out of the, at four of those five teams are from the East. It's going to be solid. It's going to be fun to watch. Michigan, Nebraska, that reaction is coming soon. We'll see you then.